The past two days, I have spoken about Gaza and Palestine, uh, Palestine, and what is going on in this part of the world and how it affects all of us as Muslims. And Alhamdulillah, a message came back to me from yesterday's speech that someone said he never knew this was what was going on. For him, it was an eye-opener to learn about the issues regarding what is happening in Palestine and how this affects each and every one of us, especially those who are from that area and those who have lived this oppression for many years. But why is it that a lot of Muslims don't know about what is happening today? The answer is very simple. Today the media is controlled largely, and not just the media, a lot of what you consume, a lot of what you take in is controlled by the Zionists or by those who have this ideology of forcing the world to conform with their own norms and practices. I don't want to mention some of these media channels, but I know you all know them. It, it's very simple when you switch on your TV to hear the news about what is going on. And you will see how one is perpetually pushed or perpetually promoting the oppressor and never sheds light on what is happening to the oppressed. This is part of what they have done to capture the minds of the globe. Similarly, they own the financial institutions. So whenever you need to seek for a loan to take care of issues regarding maybe recurrent expenditure in your nation, and you have to seek for a loan, they put such stringent laws that ties nations literally into being bound to them for as long as they want. Why have they done this? Because it was easy to fragment the Muslims, make them divided, make them fight amongst themselves. And you know they say when you divide a people, that is the first step to conquering them. The very first step to breaking the Ummah was dividing the Ummah was making us see ourselves as northern Muslim, as African or Nigerian, and not considering ourselves as one. So when that happened, it was easy for every other thing to be placed upon us as a fitna. And wallah, fitna comes as a result of our own actions and inactions. Wal fitna tu ashaddu min al -qatr. And verily, fitna is even worse than war. And the fitan we are in our, if we find ourselves today as an ummah is as a result of this fragmentation or the divisions that exist between us. Very simple things divide us. Very simple things we fight about. Things that are not asl, things that are furur, we go to war against each other. And those who want to see us more divided, find those embers of war because it is very good to them if the Muslims are divided against, amongst themselves. That is how they destroyed the Khilafah, and that is how they are still affecting us till today. However, again, a glimmer of hope. And I say this because one of the things that they have begun to realize is that the Muslims today are coming together as one unit. Today we are taking back the financial strength to showcase that, yes, as Muslims, we can manage our resources. Today we are forming blocks that if the UN does not give any heed to what we call for, the Muslim communities can come together and form a stronger unit. Today you have Muslims in power that are so strong and respected that whether they like it or not, if they accept him or they don't accept them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them. The likes of Erdogan of Turkey, whatever his weakness is, Allah knows best. But all of us know today that there is no stronger leader like Erdogan for the Muslim Ummah. May Allah protect him. Many others I would not want to mention. And I will not talk about those that are still puppets. We know they exist. May Allah guide them to the straight path. But what we must focus on is the rise of the Ummah. The fact that today the Ummah is changing. The mindset is changing. And in the next few years, bi ta'ala, we will see such a strong Ummah that maybe in our lifetime, Khilafah will retire. أقول لك ولهذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة